and worship us through our heaven the room. Come on, say it one more time. We will. That's why I bless your name. Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. How I love you. I really love you. Good morning, everybody. Y'all come on in. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. My heart sings. Good morning, Las Vegas. Everybody come on in. Good morning, good morning. Hollywood, California. Good morning. Seeing Surgeon tomorrow. I'm praying for him. You are the great Dale High, Louisiana. I am Kenna, Louisiana. Good morning, Big Al. Everybody, come on in. Everybody, invite everybody. Share everybody. Tell New Orleans East, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How I love you. Long Beach, California. Good morning. Apple Valley, California. Good morning. Come on in the room, California. Why don't you? Good morning, everybody. All of your glory. My heart sings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Baton Rouge is in the room. Monica, I see. Victorville, California. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. New York, New York, Little Rock, Arkansas, North Little Rock, Arkansas. Good morning. Upland, California. Good morning. California's taking over the room. Austin, Texas. Good morning. Marino Valley, California. Good morning. Louisiana. Good morning. Pontchartula Town, Sylvia. I see you. Good morning. Has he been good to anybody? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Has he been good to you? Every grateful person in this room. Are you grateful? To just give God some grateful praise. Come on. Just for about five seconds. I need Korea, Kenosha, Wow. Give God good morning. All the way in Korea. On, good morning. Come on. Walk you up. Start everybody, come on in. Everybody, invite. Everybody, share. Been dead. Everybody, tell. Been dead. But your praise is Nola is in the room. Houston is in the room. Phoenix, Arizona is in the room. Hallelujah. This day is Reno, Nevada, good morning. Hallelujah. Yeah, step in the room. Step in the water. That's it. Chester, South Carolina, good morning. Good morning. Mount Vernon, Alabama, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. McDonald, Georgia, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Do you love the Lord today? New Orleans East, good morning. 
Now you can be cute and miss your blessing. Good morning, if you good want. morning, good morning. But for every worshiper and everybody who loves God Hallelujah. enough to give God your praise, there's a miracle in the room for you. There's a blessing in the room Thank you, for Jesus. you. Thank you, Jesus. There's deliverance in your room for there you. There is nothing like him. There's in this room for you. Come on, somebody That's what just my heart is crying today. Holy, holy. That's what those angels cried. Holy, holy. holy. He didn't save the angels, he saved me, I cried. He didn't wake the angel up this morning, he woke me up, so I cried. He redeemed my soul from a burning hell, He redeemed my soul from a burning hell. Come on, everybody, lift your voice and cry out. Come on, somebody cry out, holy, holy. If you love him like you say you do, let me hear you say. If he's been good to you this morning, let me hear you say. Did he wake you up this morning? Greenville, South Carolina. Phoenix, Arizona. Port Arthur, Texas. Come on, somebody ought to cry with your heart. Holy, holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And tell him if you're looking for the quiet section, you ain't in it right now. I love God so much. I start thinking about how good God's been to me. I love God so much. And the doors He's opened for me. My hands gotta go up. My I love God so much. Up. I gotta give God my clothes. Thank you, Jesus. Kansas City, Missouri. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Earl home. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody said Facebook is going in and out. Are you are you all are you all seeing me well on Facebook? Good morning, Avis Brock, Avis Brock. Good morning. Thank you so much for your stars this morning. Somebody just got a flashback of where you used to be. How's your signal on Facebook? Are y'all good? Keeps going in and out. I don't know what I can do about that. Hallelujah! 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 Somebody lift your voice. Y'all might need to switch over to YouTube if if yours is going in and out. Switch over to YouTube. Hallelujah! I said Facebook is back in full. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out and come back in on Facebook. Let's see if I can do that. Let's see if I can do that. See if that makes it any better. Tell them, name. I don't know about you. Let's see. But I'm sending up smoke signals this morning. Let's see. Because you see. know, wherever Let's there's see. fire, yeah. gotta be some smoke. And every night, then you ought to give God the incense of worship. You ought to give Him the smoke of praise. Hallelujah. Don't wait on your neighbor. Don't, don't wait, wait on, on nobody else. Give God your praise. Good to you. Let's see. Let's see if Facebook is in it. Share it. We'll see. Come on, somebody send up some smoke. Facebook looks like it's uh... now you all let me know if it's any better. Chantel. Listen. Let your pastor you know if Facebook is any better. Tell him he's fire all by himself. Good morning, everybody. And look at me, tell me, if you ain't on fire, just watch me burn. Katie, Texas, good morning, I'll see you. 
Y'all let me know if Facebook is any better. Thank you, Jesus. It is better. Okay, good, 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 good. All right. Well, y'all come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, and uh, make sure that you don't come empty-handed. Make sure you invite someone uh, to share in this time of prayer with us this morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, y'all see we were about to shout on that. Um, I hope you're doing well, and I hope that... Um, that you you feel something changing in you. I think this is the first time I've ever gone two weeks on the same subject. Uh, Pastor Cooper, we're, we're still praying for him. Uh, I'm going to try to get up today to uh, see him so that I can give you all a, a progress report because we're believing for progress. Brooklyn, New York is in the room. Brenda, I see you. Um, we believe in God for progress. We believe in God for progress. We believe in God for progress. His wife, uh, my daughter, sent me a message the other day, and she says she's not uh, in her feelings. She's in her faith. She's not in her feelings. She's in her faith. She's not in her feelings. She's in her faith, um, which means she's not giving in to emotions. She's not giving over to emotions. She's not giving up to emotions. I need everybody in this room to get out of your feelings and get into your faith. Whatever your situation is, I need you to get out of your feelings and I need you to get into your faith. We're praying for Baltimore with um, the tragedy that happened yesterday. I believe it was six lives. Last thing I saw was six lives that they think were lost. Uh, in that uh, bridge uh, catastrophe yesterday. I want you all to really, really uh, pray for that city and pray for that family. That's a, that's a difficult, difficult pill to swallow um, and a difficult thing for a region to have to endure. You know, I know, man, because um, we went through Katrina and it was so devastating to all of us. Uh, so I can only imagine the, the families there and the people there and the, uh, the fear that tries to grip their hearts when something like this happens. So we're praying for them. But I want you to get out of your feelings and I want you to get into your faith. Um, there's a reason. Denise uh, Rago, Rago, thank you so much. A rogue, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure one of them is probably right. Um, thank you so much for your stars. The reason you need to get out of your feelings and get into your faith is because the consequences that come with living and operating according to your feelings, the negative consequences that happen in your life uh, when you live your life according to your feelings and not according to your faith. There's so many detrimental uh, occurrences that will happen to a person who is not emotionally stable or a person who is emotionally dysfunction, dysfunctional, should I say. Um, first thing, first, uh, let, let me give you a list of them, uh, things that, that, that happen as it relates to... Um, detrimental things that happen as it relates to the mismanagement of your emotions. First thing that happens is uh, when you're in your feelings, you don't, you don't operate in good judgment. You have impaired judgment. You know, they tell people not to drive when they're drunk, right? Why? Because they are impaired by, by the, the, the substance that is in their system. They are impaired. So 
uh, their judgment is impaired. Their 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 sight is impaired. What they their perception is impaired. Well, when if that happens when you're drunk on alcohol, what do you think happens when you're drunk on emotions? What do you think happens when you are drunk on emotions? And you are under the influence of your emotions and your emotions are literally running the show of your life. You have impaired judgment. And this is what happens. You make decisions based on feelings and based on emotions and not based on proper judgment. Are you here? And whenever you make decisions not based on proper judgment, What happens is you overlook important factors and you make choices that ultimately will not be to your best interests and choices that ultimately don't line up with the will of God for your life. I'm talking to somebody in this room. Uh, I've said this to you before. When you are impaired emotionally and dysfunctional emotionally, you make Permanent decisions because of temporary feelings. That's why it's so dangerous to live and walk in in your feelings because your judgment is so impaired. How many times have you done something in a moment of of, uh, emotional despair that you wish you could have taken back? How many times? Listen to what Proverbs 14 and 29 says. It says, whoever is patient has great understanding. Whoever is patient has great understanding, but one, the one who is quick-tempered displays folly or foolishness. What is this verse saying? It is highlighting the importance of patience in decision-making, indicating that acting impulsively based on emotions can lead to unwise choices, and unwise choices can ultimately lead to disaster. That's why the Bible says, Cassandra Peters, Elder Cassandra Peters, thank you so much, that you and I ought to be reasonable enough to reason together. And when you're in your emotions, you're, you're, you're not reasonable. When you're in your feelings, you're not reasonable. Are you here? When, 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 when you don't conduct the orchestra of your emotions and you let your emotions run the show, you're unreasonable and you, you have impaired judgment and you make bad decisions and bad choices. Are you here? You make bad decisions and bad choices. Uh, emotional decisions cloud our ability to think rationally and consider the consequences and consider uh, not only the physical consequences, but the spiritual consequences of the decisions we make. Proverbs 14 and 29 was the scripture I read. Whoever is patient has great understanding. Whoever is patient has great understanding. And what is patience? Patience is me commanding my emotions through the aid of the Holy Spirit. I can't do it apart from the Holy Spirit. I can't I can't command my emotions apart from the Holy Spirit. But with the Holy Spirit, I can command my emotions. Without the Holy Spirit, my feelings get the best of me. My emotions get the best of me. And I find myself making uh, improper decisions because... I am dictated to by my feelings rather than me dictating uh, uh, to my feelings. Are you here? It is essential to exercise patience and seek wisdom before making important choices. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And the Bible says God will give to that man wisdom liberally. Are you here? So, So why is it so important? Uh, for me to get my emotions in check. First of all, it keeps me from making impaired, uh, having impaired judgment and making improper decisions. But the second thing it does is it keeps me from living a life of regret and guilt. Did you hear what I just said? It keeps me from living a life of regret, guilt, and let me add a third one, shame. 
It keeps me from living a life of regret, guilt, and shame. Um, it is a sin to be out of control. It is a sin to be out of control emotionally. It is a sin to mismanage your emotions. Are you here? As a matter of fact, the mismanagement of emotions and guilt and shame came in with sin in the garden. The Bible says that Adam and Eve operate outside of the will of God, right? Adam and Eve operate outside of the will of God in the book of Genesis. And the first thing they do after sin enters is they they start feeling the emotion of guilt and shame. How do I know it? First thing they do after they um, after they sin is the Bible says they start trying to cover it up. They start uh, sewing fig leaves on, trying to cover up their nakedness. They have been naked all their lives. Why are you ashamed of being naked now? Because sin is entered in. And sin brought with it the emotion of guilt, the emotion of shame. Those of you who live uh, in a place of regret, guilt, and shame, uh, it, 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 is, it is probably because you are, it, there is some aspect of your life that is outside of the will of God. Are you here? It is when I realize that I am outside of the will of God. It is when I realize that I am not in compliance with God's will and I am not in divine order that regret and guilt and shame start taking over my heart. Emotional decisions often lead to regret and guilt. When we realize that our emotions may have influenced us to make choices that we will later regret. Listen to what Proverbs 14 and 17 says. It says a quick tempered person does foolish things. A quick tempered person does foolish things and the one who devises evil schemes is hated. This verse emphasizes uh, the negative outcome that comes as a result of hasty and emotionally driven decisions. He says, when you live according to your feelings, you will wind up regretting, you will wind up uh, guilty, you will wind up shame. And you will wind up sewing fig leaves on trying to cover up what you've done because you did it as a result of your feelings and not as a result of wisdom. I want to ask somebody in this room, how many things have you regretted? How much regret have you had to operate in because you operated in your feelings and not in the wisdom of God? Are you here? You operated in your feelings. I was in my feelings. Why'd you do that? I was in my feelings. What happened? Girl, I got in my feelings. Man, I got in my feelings. Are you here? And that's one of the most dangerous places to be. Because your feelings always lead you to sin. Because your feelings are a product of your flesh. And according to scripture, in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. Your feelings will lead you the opposite way of God. Your feelings will always pull you away from God's ultimate plan and God's ultimate will for your life. So it should never be the testimony of a believer that I'm, I'm living in my feelings. I'm, I was just in my feelings. I was just in, my, well, come on out of your feelings. If you know you're in there, why stay there? particularly when you know that your feelings are in direct opposition to the will of God. It's going to lead to regret. It's going to lead to guilt. It's going to, really, it's going to lead to shame. And it's going to lead you to, to, to sowing fig leaves and trying to cover up stuff because you're ashamed that you have disappointed the heart of God. Are you here? See, when you are emotional in your decision making you lack objectivity emotional decisions lead to a lack of objectivity causing us uh to be biased and unable to see the situation from different perspectives uh in other words when you're emotional 
you lock in on what you lock in on and nobody can tell you any different, even if what you're locked in on is wrong. I heard a preacher, a pastor, uh, a supposed leader on television telling his church uh, that in his house, if he's just if he's wrong, he's just wrong. And everybody get in line and follow me because I'm the man of this house. No, you are emotional, sir. And you are out of the will of God. If I am wrong as a man of God, I need to get myself right. I need to make sure that I do what what necessitates me coming out of my emotions and stepping into the wisdom of God. Are you here? Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Or in other words, when I stop following Christ, you stop following me. When I get into my feelings and into my emotions and I start talking stuff that does not line up with the will of God and I start making emotional choices and decisions, don't follow me in my mess. When you, when you, uh, don't, when you are in your feelings, you lack objectivity. That's why some of you are so stubborn. That's, that's stubbornness is a result of you not controlling your emotions, but rather your emotions controlling you. God calls Israel in, in scripture. He calls them a stubborn, stiff necked people. He says, he says, you all are stiff necked. You, you uh, are stubborn. You don't listen. You want to do things your way. I wish I had some help in now. And you, and you will ultimately pay the price for your lack of objectivity and your unwillingness to see things from a different perspective. Yes. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. See, y'all think just sprinkling dust and all that kind of stuff and, 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 you know, incantations and all that. You think that's what you think of as witchcraft, but witchcraft is when you rebel willingly and knowingly, you live in your feelings and you rebel against the will of God. Nancy Moore, thank you so much. I'm talking to somebody right now. Are you here? You lack objectivity. Proverbs 18 and, and, and 2 says this. Uh, Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinion. Oh, my God. Your opinion is the only one that matters. Davin Clint Smith Sr., thank you, sir. Your opinion is the only one that matters. Let me read that for you again uh, so that so that some of you will see uh, yourself in light of the scripture. He says, fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their opinion. As long as I say what I got to say, I don't care what anybody else has to say. I'm not objective. My opinion is the only one that matters. This verse warns against self-centered, uh, uh, self-centeredness and approaching life as if your choice and your decision can never be changed and, and your objective is locked in or, or your, your, your mindset is locked in and you're not objective at all as it relates to, uh, to changing. Your unwillingness to change is a mismanagement of your emotions many times. Now, there's some things I ain't changing on. I ain't changing on God. I'm not changing on who he is. I'm not changing. And listen, you can't change my mind on that. But some of my opinionated stuff needs to change because that's me mismanaging my life through mismanaging my emotions, allowing my emotions to dictate the course of my life. Are y'all here? Emotional decisions can be driven by our own desires and preferences, hindering our ability to make fair and balanced choices and even hindering our ability to hear the perspectives of other people. And you're the person who is miserable to live with because can't nobody tell you nothing. And when they married you, they did not know they were marrying Mr. Right and Mrs. Right. 
they knew they were married Mr. Wright and Mrs. Wright. They just didn't know your first name was always, you're always right. You're always right. And the Bible says a fool is always right in his own mind. I got me a quiet church here today. So, so your unwillingness to be objective in, in your opinions and hear perspectives is a mismanagement of your emotions. It's stubbornness on display. And God hates a stubborn spirit. God hates a stubborn spirit. God loves humility. The Bible says he resists the proud because stubbornness is a result of your pride. You and your feelings. You feeling yourself. Huh? So he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Joanne Baldwin, thank you so much. He resists the proud, but he gives, he gives, he gives grace to the humble. I'm preaching to somebody in this room. It is crucial to strive for objectivity and seek wise counsel when faced with important decisions. Some of you don't have any voices you listen to. You have no sobering voices in your life, and that's why you keep making unsound, undisciplined, foolish choices in your life because you have no sobering voices. It's quiet. You have nobody in your life that will tell you when you're making a fool of yourself and when you're out of the will of God, you have nobody you'll listen to. You're not objective at all in your approach to life. And because you're, you're not objective, what happens is you become impulsive in your actions. So you operate on impulses. I felt it. So I did it. I felt it. So I did it. I'm impulsive in my actions. Emotional decisions often result in impulsive actions without considering the potential consequences leading to harmful outcomes. How many people have you hurt because you mismanaged your emotions and you were impulsive in what you said? What comes up? Listen, this is the most foolish statement ever made. What comes up comes out. The Bible says that when you're righteous, you study to answer. I don't just answer. I study before I answer. How many foolish choices have you made and people have you hurt? Vanessa Ewing, thank you so much for your stars. How many people have you hurt? How many people have you insulted? Let's go even further than that. How many people have you run from the kingdom of God because you were wearing God's uniform, but you were actually playing Satan's game? You were impulsive. You snap people up. You're out of control. You, 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 you don't mind your mouth. You don't mind your manners. You don't mind your moods. But you're a Christian. Are you here? There are a whole lot of things that have come to my mind that I had to muzzle my mouth concerning because I knew it was not God. It was my feelings trying to surface. It was my emotions trying to drive me to say something that would ultimately ruin the lives of other people and ruin my reputation as a man of God. You cannot be impulsive. You cannot be impulsive. You only have so many times you can keep apologizing to people for being rude and nasty because you're having emotional moments and you don't manage your emotions. Got me a quiet church here today. Got me a quiet church here today. Listen to what Proverbs 19 and 2 says, desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? He says when you're hasty, you keep missing it. 
You keep missing it. A lot of you, listen, you don't listen to people. You, you're quick to make judgments as to what people are saying. So you respond to what you think they're saying, not what they're actually saying. And you keep missing the whole point. And you rupture relationships, friendships, partnership, and people want to love you, but you, you make yourself so hard to love because you're so impulsive and so moody and so fickle and, and you're always in your feelings and you wear everything on your sleeve and you don't, you hear what you want to hear and not what's being said because you have mismanaged emotions. Brother Cedric Morris said, thank you so much for your super chat, sir. And you keep missing it. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody who was impulsive and, and, and they just kept missing it? And you said, Lord, have mercy. The Bible says he that answers a matter before he hears it, he says that person is going to end up looking like a fool before they can get it out. You are, I already know where you're going. How do you know where I'm going when I haven't gotten there yet? How do you know what I'm saying when I haven't said it yet? Calm down. Stop being so impulsive. A lot of times you will discover, those of you who jump to conclusions, a lot of times you will discover that you and a person are saying the same thing. You're just saying it different ways, but because you're impulsive and you won't listen and you jump to conclusions, you never hear the whole matter. Ryan, bro, Ryan, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Are you here? He says, he says, desire without knowledge is not good. He says, how much more will hasty feet miss the way? This verse uh, highlights the dangers of acting on desire without considering knowledge, acting on desire without considering knowledge. That's why the Bible says, if you know you lack wisdom, Ask of God. Say, Lord, I need wisdom. My daughter, Azarine, thank you so much. If you know you lack wisdom, you need to ask the Lord. Say, now, Lord, I need wisdom. I don't want to be in my feelings on this. I don't want to be in my feelings on this. I don't want to be in my feelings on this. Are y'all here? A um, couple years ago, I had... Long conversation with 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 uh, uh, um, a young lady concerning uh, her husband. Guy she had chosen to marry. He was a good man. He was just he was having a hard time. And I'm telling her, calm down, calm down, calm down. Don't be impulsive. Don't be impulsive. Don't be impulsive. Don't be impulsive. Right? I said, don't make a permanent decision because you having your you and your little temporary feelings. I say, you got a good man, a man who loves you, a man who is trying, a man who goes to work every day, a man who comes home, a man who brings his money home, even though right now he ain't making the kind of money you want him to make, right? I said, calm down and don't be impulsive. You all grow together. I say, y'all ain't been together, but two minutes. Grow together, learn each other, develop, and all of the above. Well, lo and behold, she does not take heed to the wisdom I give her. She decides that she's going to up and file for divorce and leave her husband. She leaves her husband. And when she leaves her husband, within the next six months, he gets the job of his dreams. And now he, he, is, he is making the kind of money he wants to make uh, or needs to make. He is he's buying his own home and all of the above. And the same woman that I told, uh, Gail, Gray, th Gail Gray, thank you so much for your, for your start. Same woman that I told, slow down, don't make a hasty decision. Now she comes to me trying to get me to facilitate a conversation between him and her for her to be able to get back with her husband. But that ship, had sailed. That ship had sailed. She made a permanent decision because of her low temporary feelings. 
I told you, I told him, I said, wait on the man. Wait, wait on him. He's trying. Man working two jobs, trying to please you. He's trying. Wait on him. Are you here? You all got to stop. We have to stop. I can't say you all. We have to stop allowing ourselves to be dictated to by our emotions and by our little feelings. Because feelings are too fickle to be the foundation of your life. Are you here? And when you are impulsive in your decision, I'm going to close on this one. You wind up with strained relationships. You wind up with strained relationships. Sabrina Black and Gold and Masol, thank you so much for your stars. You wind up with strained relationships. Tamiko Peoples, thank you so much uh, for your super chat. You wind up with strained relationships. Emotional decisions can strain relationships uh, as they may be driven by temporary emotions rather than considering the impact on others. So you make these decisions considering the not considering the impact on others when I when I when I, I went to him, I said, well, now, I said, now, you know, your wife wants to talk. He said, well, I don't want to talk now. He said, because Edna Rapp, thank you so much, said, because, you know, if a woman could leave me so easily when I'm trying, what does that say about her love for me? She did not consider the impact that her decision would have on him. To Denise King, thank you so much. So she impacted that relationship in a way uh, uh, so much that in his mind, it was irreparable damage. Are you here? It causes strained relationships and you don't consider what your being and your feelings and operating in your emotions and being impulsive in your actions. You don't consider the effect it's having on the other person. Ephesians 4, 26 through 27 says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold or give no place to the devil. This verse encourages us to handle our emotions in a way that does not lead to sin. Handle our emotions in a way that does not lead to sin. Don't give in to your emotions. Are you here? Get over your emotions. He says, don't walk around, you know, mad for days and, and allowing emotions to rupture the unity and the harmony within the confines of your relational experiences. A lot of y'all got brothers and sisters that you that you walk around with not even speaking to. Are you here? And you, it is incumbent upon you, child of God, to close that chapter. It is incumbent upon you to build that bridge. See, your feelings will have you building walls. Your wisdom will have you building bridges. When you're in your feelings, when you're in your feelings, you build walls, right? But when you're in your, in your wisdom, you build bridges. Life is too short for you to stay in your feelings and stay in your emotions and allow important relationships, allow people to die off. And you've never told them you love them and you you've never said, I'm sorry. And you've never listen. And, 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 and I won't go even further than that. It's your emotions that keep you from being able to say you're sorry because you're trying to win an argument. Barbara Hunter, thank you so much. When as a Christian, you should not be in your feelings, you ought to be in your wisdom and in your feelings, you're trying to win an argument, but in your wisdom, you're trying to win your brother or win your sister. Some of y'all got folk you need to call and say, now we need to stop this foolishness. We need to cut this out. We weren't raised like this. This is not, this is not how we're supposed to be operating. And even if we were raised like this, this ain't God's plan for our lives. We need to, we need to cut this out. And, and if I got to be big enough to be the one to break the ice, if I got to swallow my little feelings and come on out of my emotions and, and make this thing work, I'm going to be the one. 
I believe that God has given me the ministry of reconciliation and I'm going to be reconciled unto my brother. There have been days that Robert Blakes Jr. and I have fallen out, but we've never fallen apart. Because we understand how important our relationship is. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about having to see people every other day, but I am talking about not harboring and holding uh, uh, negative emotions in your heart concerning them because it's doing damage to you. Not only is it damaging y'all, it's damaging you. And you think you're doing something big, walking around here holding grudges. Walking around here harboring negative feelings and negative emotions. You think you're doing something big. You are literally killing yourself and you don't even realize it. Yeah, but you don't know my brother. Oh, you don't know my Jesus. And you don't know that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And if you pray and pray right concerning your brother, your negative, nasty, spirited brother, God can change his life. But you got to get out of your feelings. You got to get out of your emotions. And you got to stop being so impulsive and negative. Mm -mm -mm. I bet you wasn't expecting that today. Are you here? And I know that that is convicting somebody right now. I know that that is convicting somebody right now. Somebody's going to make a call today. Somebody's going to make a call today. And somebody's going to make the first step today toward reconciling a relationship. Somebody's going to come out of your emotions and you're not going to allow important relationships to remain strained. If they do remain strained, it won't be because because you facilitated the strain. You're going to do everything in your power to let them know that the door is open for you. And I felt that way, but I'm no longer I'm no longer feeling that way because my emotions don't command me. I command them. All right. My emotions don't command me. There's a reason God put me here. God's given me to reconcile some family members. God's given me to reconcile some folk. God's getting ready. God's getting ready to restore some relationships. And and let me speak prophetically. It's gonna be better the second time around. God's giving me to restore some relationships that you said you would never engage again. And it's going to be better the second time around. Father, I thank you for your word today and I thank you for your people. I thank you that this word has fallen on good ground and that our hearts have been conditioned not just to hear it but to receive it. Father, take out that pridefulness in us that keeps us from complying with your will and keeps us from our brothers and from our sisters. Take it out. And if there's any thing in us that does not properly represent you, that keeps us living in our feelings and won't let us manage the course of our feelings, Father, I pray now for a divine deliverance and breakthrough in that area. I bind every work of the enemy. I bind every work of the enemy. I declare now that your people are emotionally well and whole and healed. I declare now that your people are walking in the freedom of the Holy Ghost, the freedom that only your spirit can bring. Every wounded heart in this room, I thank you, Father, for mending and healing that heart. Every broken spirit, I thank you, Father, that there is restoration taking place in them. And I thank you, Father, that when we leave this room today, we will not feel the same. We will not operate the same. We will not think the same. We will not be the same. I thank you, Father, that as we are tried today, our responses are going to be different. 
our responses are going to glorify you and not glorify the enemy. Our responses will be seasoned with wisdom. Our words will be with wisdom and not with warfare. Thank you now. Thank you now. Thank you now. Father, I thank you for that peace in this room that surpasses all understanding, keeping our hearts and keeping our minds. I thank you, Father, for giving us wisdom as we intermingle, even with difficult people. I thank you, Father, that they will not pull us into their stuff, but we will pull them into your stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for helping us to look introspectively. Those of us who are looking externally, help us to look internally and see those things in us that do not please you and do not properly represent who you are. And we will forever give you glory. We'll give you honor. And yes, we'll give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Was this word for anybody here today? Now we see why the Lord has us on this for two weeks. And you, you mess around and God will have us on it for a third week. Pastor Moore, I love you, sir. And I'm praying for you. Thank you so much for uh, your stars today. We're praying for you, Pastor Moore, on the transitioning of your mother praying for you. Y'all receive this today? Y'all receive it? Thank you, Father. I love you all so very much, and I'm, I'm so appreciative for you spending these few moments with me. Now, listen, those of you today who want to be a blessing to our church, I want you to do it today. Uh, all of the giving information is now on your screen. All of the giving information is now on your screen. You can do it um, on our church's uh, Cash App. You can be a blessing through Cash App, uh, dollar sign NHM 1030, dollar sign NHM 1030. You can do it on our church's Cash App. Secondly, you can do it uh, through, here we go. I got the wrong thing up. You can do it through PayPal on our church's website. www.newhomeministries.org. Uh, thirdly, you can do it through the Givelify app. Put in New Home for Gospel Ministries. You see a little picture of me and a bigger picture of our church. You can do it there. And then finally, uh, you can do it through uh, text to give. Text NHFWCBR to 54244. NHFWCBR to 54244. All right. You can be a blessing uh, to the work of God um, today. I want you to do that today. And as you bless the work of God, if the work if the work of God is blessing you, I want you in turn to be a blessing to the work of God. Uh, also, if you uh, want to mail your seeds in, you can do it by mailing it to 1605 Robert C. Blake's Senior Drive, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70130, 1605 Robert C. Blake Senior Drive, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70130. I've also pinned the giving information on your screen for those of you who, who need it. All right. I love you so very, very much. Let's see here. Let's go back uh, to my camera. Let's see. Where am I? Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. I'm messing this thing all up this morning. Um, thank you all so much. And I love you uh, for for being so kind and and for uh, being so supportive of our ministry. Did y'all get it today? Y'all got it today, right? Y'all got it today? Well, I love you and I thank God for you. Listen, we're getting ready to go in just a moment. Everybody who is not subscribed to my uh, YouTube, please subscribe right now. If you're watching on YouTube and you're not subscribed, Please subscribe right now. Subscribe right now. 
um, Bishop Samuel R. Blex on YouTube. Bishop Samuel R. Blex uh, on YouTube. Also, follow me on Instagram at SR Blex. Facebook, like my page, Pastor Samuel R. Blex. Follow my profile, Samuel R. Blex. Um, and, uh, and I believe that God is going to say something through uh, our social media. That's going to be a blessing to you. Nikiva, Narcisse, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you so very, very much. Um, I believe God's going to say something that's going to be transformative to your life and uh, change you forever. I believe that. I really do. I'm not the person who plays on social media all day. Uh, I ain't posting a bunch of foolishness all day. When I post, it's 99.9% .9 of the time, it's something that I believe is going to be spiritually beneficial to the, the hearer or the person who sees it. That's how I post. I'm, uh, so when you follow me, you're following for a purpose, right? Um, also, uh, those who are on TikTok, uh, I am on TikTok. Uh, it is Samuel R. Uh, at Samuel R. Blex. At Samuel R. Blex. At Samuel R. Blex. All right. I forgot my name just now. At Samuel R. Blex. I was trying to figure out the sign, the symbol before. I was giving it to say, Dava sign Samuel R. Blex. No, at Samuel R. Blex. All right. I, I love you all. And listen, we're getting ready to go. Let's get a song under our belt. Now, listen, this Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. New Orleans, we got two services, 8 o'clock a.m., right? And then 10.30 a.m., 8 o'clock a.m., 10.30 a.m. Baton Rouge, 8 o'clock a.m. Uh, my brother is going to uh, be at the 8 o'clock service, New Orleans. I'll do 10.30. I'm going to do 8 o'clock Baton Rouge. We are going to have church on Sunday. We're going to serve a risen Savior. Uh, I don't, I'm trying to get away from Easter because I don't know Easter, but I, I do know resurrection. See, Easter can be associated with other things, eggs and bunnies and all of that kind of stuff. But the resurrection can only be associated with Jesus. The resurrection can only be associated with Jesus, right? So, so it's resurrection Sunday and y'all know new home ministries. You better get there on time, eight o'clock. You better get there on time, 1030. You better get there on time uh, because we are going to have church, 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 8 o'clock, uh, Baton Rouge. You better get there on time because we're going to have church, 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 church. We serve a risen Savior, and he's in the world today. All right? I love you. Let's get ready to go. Uh, let's get a song under our belt, and, um, and uh, we're getting ready getting ready to go. Let's see what, what I'm going to play for you as we get ready to go, because I have a meeting that I'm supposed to be in right now. Let's see here. Right about now, I'm supposed to be in that meeting. Let's see. Um, let, let's go with you are God today. You are God. You are God. That's that's one of, one of my favorites. Got enough to save me, got enough to raise me, got enough to heal me, got enough to feel me. You are God, you are enough to bless me when the devil tried to stress me you were good enough to make me when life when life tried to break me you're God you are Amazing. 
You're good. Listen, I love you all. Thank you so much for your super chat and for your stars today. Uh, to all of you uh, who have given uh, uh, Cash App, thank you so much. Mary Dodge, thank you so much. Diane Hampton, thank you so much. Irish Edwards, thank you so much. Tracy London, thank you so much. My daughter Azarine, thank you so much. Monique Thompson, thank you so much. Rochelle Price, thank you so much. Uh, Chevelle Kerr, thank you so much. Uh, Shan, thank you so much. I, I think I might be reading some from yesterday, but that's all right. Antoinette Atkinson, thank you so much. Andrea Bell, thank you so much. Cynthia Barber, thank you so much. But Brian Lords, thank you so much. Thank you to all of you. Y'all have an amazing day. You serve an amazing God, and you are amazing, 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 amazing people. And, uh, you know what I got to say to you, right? Go get it because God says it is absolutely positively yours. Now, I'm not going to play a ending song today because I got I to gotta get out of here. I want y'all to have a supernatural day. Don't you get in your feelings today. Step into your wisdom today. Step into your faith today. Roxy Weatherspoon, thank you so much for your super chat. Y'all have an amazing day. I love you. God bless. <laughs>